Hello guys and welcome back to another mCreditor tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a connected texture mod or CTM uh, using Optifine and a whole bunch of textures. So basically there's a different methods that you can use to create these uh, connected textures. Some of them might require different settings. I have only really tested the um, top one here where it says the uh, specific property method, the eight-way connected texture. So the standard one. Uh, this one I know for sure works. Uh, the one that is compact I had some issues with. I'm sure it just requires some different settings. But um, I'll be going through the steps and stuff of how to set all this up. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is create a texture for our actual model. Uh, this will be used for our block first, and then we can expand it into a connected texture thing. Uh, one thing to note is you're going to need a bunch of edges, so the best thing to do actually first is create your base texture. Uh, which will be basically the texture that repeats uh, underneath all the borders and stuff. Um, this is kind of what the texture will look like. I'm going to adjust the white so it's a little bit darker. And then we can use that as our base texture. So uh, once you have something like that uh, set up, what you can do is you can start working on the borders and stuff. I'll get into that in a little bit. But um, the texture, it's really important to have like a base model for this. Uh, the other thing is all the little green lines and dots, those are all different parts that require the um, connection borders for the actual things. So I'll make sure to provide the link to that website down in the description so you guys can easily read it. It's always up to date with the newest version of the mod for Optifine. Once you have all your textures created and you basically can move on to creating a folder called um, Minecraft or your block name. So you're going to create your block name for your actual textures and you're going to stick them all in that block name for the folder. Uh, this is uh, important for the step later on, but we have a total of like 47 textures because it starts at zero. So it goes all the way to 46, which is actually 47 because it's plus one, right? So uh, once you have all these textures, again, I will provide these in the description below. So the next important thing is to know what your mod namespace is. So if you go to the workspace and then workspace properties or settings, you can see the workspace name right under red, uh, the namespace. Once you've done that, what you can do is you can start working on implementing the block for your mod. So you need to import the basic border texture uh, for all four sides and then what you can do is you can create your uh, block in mCreator. So I'm just going to create a really quick block quickly and we're going to set our texture for all the sides. This will be the default texture so when people aren't using the resource pack it, they'll see this texture instead. I'm going to set some of the properties to make it more similar to iron and put it under just leave it under the uh, building blocks tab and then I'm going to make sure that the sound is metal and that it requires at least stone to break so I'm also going to require a pickaxe and uh, those are all op optional settings obviously but uh, those can make it a difference when actually making something seem more like metal so outside of that I'm pretty happy with all the other properties so we can just save and then what we can do is we can regenerate the code. So what we're going to do is we're going to regenerate. You can press that button up there. Or you can go up to the regeneration under build and run and press the regenerate. Once you've done that, click the export button on the left or the right hand side. And click this button to export and without donation you can donate as well later on if you want to and then just save your modification we'll be needing this in a little bit the next thing that we need to do is work on the folder structure so we need to create a resource pack um, folder where we're going to be storing all our stuff in 
and we're going to drag the metal block. Well, we'll, we'll create the folder structure first. So we need one called um, assets, and then we're going to need another folder called um, Minecraft. This will be where Optifine nests under. So once you have this Minecraft folder, then what you need to do is create one called Optifine. And then inside Optifine, you need one called CTM, which is Connected Textures Mod. And then finally, you can place your actual block folder. This is the subfolder for your block in, with all your textures and stuff in it inside of the folder here. And this will basically consist of the folder structure that you need for importing all the textures. Now we need to actually create a text file and we're going to basically select the all of the extension and stuff and we're going to make sure that it sets the uh, file name to properties. We're going to actually name it our block and then we're going to do dot properties. It's going to prompt you to if you want to change, make this change. If you're not sure how to get the extension for the files on your computer, you can go under view and then check and uncheck the uh, file extensions uh, box right here. The next thing that you need to do is actually set up the properties inside the file. So I suggest opening this with um, Notepad++. And then we're going to get a few different variables for the actual properties file. So the first thing that we're going to need is one called method. And then we're going to put an equal sign on the other side of this. And then finally, we need the method that we're going to be using. So in this case, we want the CTM for the method option. Uh, this will give us the default, uh, the standard texture that we basically created. The next thing that we need to create is one called tiles. This is going to specify what tiles are going to be used. We need to specify all of the different images. Um, we can create a range from 0 to 60 or 46, and that will create the range between our texture numbers. So 0 to 46, and that's pretty much the second setting. The last setting that we need is to specify the uh, match blocks. So match blocks is going to help us replace the texture and tell it what to basically identify as. Now when you're doing this uh, you're going to need to do a namespace and then followed by the blocks registry name. So the blocks registry name is the registry name that you basically assign the block. Normally it you can find this in M Creator by one of the tabs for viewing the textures. Uh, we're gonna just use the example, which is my namespace, and then metal block, which is the registry name for the block. Um, once you've done that, make sure to save the file, and then you can basically just close out of this. The next major thing that you need to do is actually open up the jar. So you're gonna need a application such as 7-Zip or WinRAR. Once you're in an archive program, you're going to need to drag this uh, MC uh, pack file, the pack file that is in that main folder, and we're going to put that into the folder with the assets. Once you've done that, open it up with Notepad Glen, and then what what you can do is you can basically just delete these two lines where it says forge, and then on the line where it says the pack format, just make sure that there isn't a comma at the end of there. And then you should be able to use this file for your resource pack. So everything else is basically set up as it should be. So a couple notable mentions is a couple pages on mCreator wiki, uh, or not mCreator, Minecraft wiki. And uh, this page here, basically, I'll provide in the description, it basically covers the general information about resource packs, how to create, well, not so much how to create them, but the general folder structure. There's the pack MC meta and the pack PNG, which can be used for your icon, as well as the folder structure for assets, the namespace, and all the other folders that are basically can go in here. Now the namespace also can, can be with the Optifine as well if you have Optifine installed. So keep that in mind. 
Another notable mention is tutorials slash creating a resource pack. This is, has uh, many useful information on actually creating a resource pack and the general way of creating it. So I'll make sure to include this as well. The one other thing that we can actually customize in our resource pack is creating a 128 by 128 image for our pack PNG file, which will be our basically our logo for the resource pack when we create it. So we can create a quick texture for this. So I'm just gonna go quickly with this kind of texture just to kind of give you an example of what a pack texture might look like. You can customize this as long uh, as much as you want, but this is basically just the outline that I'm gonna go with for the pack PNG file. And once we have this, uh, what we can do is we can actually save it to our desktop and we'll put that into the folder with the pack um, MC, .c, mc meta file. So this is basically the folder structure that we should have. Once you have that, select all the files and folders in this folder and set uh, create resort or create zip file, or I think it's send to zip file, and then you can basically give this a name. So that's important not to do the entire folder like for the thing, but select the files instead. Now, installing them is a little bit different. Uh, most of the time, you can find your world, your settings files under percent app data percent, and then you can click on the folder here, and then go to the dot Minecraft folder. Generally, your files uh, for your saves and, or the profile will be located in here. Uh, I have mine separated into a different um, drive as well as um, in individual profiles so we'll go to mine but basically that's how you get to the app data file uh, we'll go into the 1.19 one and then you can kind of see that we have saves and a few other settings so we're going to quickly open up the resource pack folder and then we're going to move this over here close out of that one so we can actually see a little bit better and we're going to place our resource pack into this folder called the resource packs and then the other one that we need is to drop our mod in the mods folder so we can basically go ahead and do this make sure to have forge installed and the only two that you need is optifine in your mod once you've done this uh, we can actually get our mod in game and or block in game and we can basically test see how it works so this is without the resource pack as you can see that it just places the regular texture uh, for a block now this is important because if people want to use the connected textures they will require the resource pack in order to test it uh, to use the connected textures so in, under the resource packs we're going to enable the resource pack that we want and then basically it's just the one that we created and then what we can do is we can place down the blocks and I think generally all the blocks will update automatically but um, we're going to just demonstrate it with a new, new freshly placed down block. So as you can see, all the textures connect like normal and stuff like that. So I'll make sure to provide the template for the mod, the actual workspace for the mod as well, all the textures that are created for this tutorial, and the settings and all the other components in and on GitHub. So you guys can basically use it as a template to create your textures and stuff with. But uh, basically, that's how it's done. As you can see, all the textures basically set are set up properly. So, If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.